It is vitally important that if God has called you to witness to a specific group, to a particular group, that you enter into the mindset and step into the shoes of the people you're witnessing to so you can understand their mentality and be enabled by the Spirit to then give the most effective witness and case for the truth of the gospel possible. Thank you, uh, Mega. Mega, but I thank you for the super chat. I'm not complaining. Lord Jesus, bless you guys. Any income comes in helps. But remember, YouTube takes 30% of what you give. And beggars can't be choosers, I'm thankful. But Mega, there are other ways you can send me. You know that. Come on. Now. But thank you, sister. But now with that said, don't think I'm complaining. I'm just letting you know. Some people know me personally, unfortunately for them. Meg is one of those who knows me personally, but unfortunately for her. It's not, it's not getting her far, and it's not helping her. But now, with that said, focus with me. <clears throat> it is vitally important that you enter into the mindset, enter into the shoes of the people you're witnessing to, to know how they think, so you know how to then present the gospel more effectively. And you know where I'm getting this from? You know where I'm getting this from? I'm getting it from the Apostle Paul, who was inspired by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 and 23. As I said, in my sessions, I want to teach you practical application. Teach you how to live the faith by the power of the Spirit. Because I need to live the faith and obey my God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. To show him that I love him and not pay lip service. Teach you how to interpret the scriptures and how to refute attacks against the truth. Yes, Pedro. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 and 23. Exactly. Hapsa got it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 and 23. Let's explain what Paul meant and what Paul did not mean. Exactly, Snow Leopard. When he was dealing with the Athenians, he quoted their Greek philosophers and pagans and poets. Guys, do pay attention to this. This is inspired by the Spirit. Listen to what the Spirit had Paul write. For though I am free, I am free of, of the world. I am free from Satan. I am free from sin. I am free from lust. I am not imprisoned by sin, Satan, and the world. I'm a slave of Jesus Christ, a slave of righteousness, a slave of the Holy Spirit. Though I'm a fr I'm free from all people, I have made myself the slave to all. I have willfully, voluntarily made myself a slave to mankind for the glory of Jesus Christ, for his sake, so that I may gain as many people as possible. Now notice what he says. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to gain Jews. To those under the law, I became as under the law. Though I myself am not under the law. In order to gain those under the law. I'm going to explain what he means and what he doesn't mean in a minute. To those without law, I became as, as without law. Although I am not without law. I am under the law. I have a law that Jesus has command me, commanded me to obey by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm not lawless. I don't live lawlessly. I am under the law of Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I strive to obey the commands of Jesus Christ. Right? Although I'm not without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ. In order to gain those without law. I'm going to explain what he means in a minute. No, Rory, you can't. Rory, just bring your best friend. Sit down and relax. It's not about you getting attention right now, Rory. Calm down, brother. <clears throat> now, watch this. <clears throat> there goes my voice. Rebuke Satan in Jesus' name. To the weak, I became weak in order to gain the weak. I have become all things to people of all sorts. So that I might, by all possible means, save some. But I, but I do all things for the sake of the good news in order to share it with others. Like everyone with me? You understand what Paul just said? Did you understand what Paul just said? You understand the argument? As Holy Spirit empowers me to focus and destroys distractions in Jesus' name, please, Holy Spirit, take over. Fill us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Paul is not saying he's a deceiver and he lies to people. Paul is not saying use trickery. Be conniving, scheme, use deceit. That's Allah and Muhammad. That's Allah and Muhammad. What Paul is saying is, I took into consideration the people that I'm addressing. So if I'm dealing with Muslims, and I know that this Muslim will be offended if I eat pig meat, even though I'm free to eat it, for his sake, I won't cause him to stumble, and I will refrain from eating pig meat. Or if Muslims find it immoral for a Christian man 
to hug and kiss his Christian wife or to hold her hand, then for his conscience sake, I'll refrain from doing that. And if saying God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit will confuse the Muslim to thinking there are three gods, then I'm going to express the same truth about who God is. I'm not going to lie about who God is, but I'm going to explain it in a sense, in a way that makes sense to him. God, his eternal word, and his eternal spirit. And that word came forth from God. And because it came forth from God, and God is the source of that word, that word is the son, and that word became flesh, Jesus Christ. You understand what Paul is saying? I will not hide in Jesus' name, destroy the buffering in Jesus' name. Father, Holy Spirit, please, my God. Watch me, my God, and say, Lord, confess. Let pray for the connection. I'm not connected to the router or modem. What he's saying is, I will not lie. I will not pervert. I will not hide. I will not deceive. But I can express the truth of the gospel in a manner that makes sense to them. Exactly. Engage the culture. On a level they'll understand. You with me there? Are you with me there? Connection has been fa fabulous. So in Jesus' name, may you stay fabulous. So that's what he's saying. So going to a Muslim saying, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, makes no sense. That's three gods. But I can say God is the eternal word that became flesh and is the eternal spirit. And since God is the source of the word, he is the father of the word, the word is the son, and that's Jesus Christ. Right? Now that Paul is not saying be like Muhammad and his God, lie and connive and scheme and deceive. Let me show you what Paul says. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. Watch here. For the thing we boast of is this. Here's my boasting. Our conscience bears witness that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially toward you, with holiness and godly sincerity. Not with fleshly wisdom, but with God's underserved kindness. Did you catch it? I will boast, and my conscience is clear because God bears witness. I don't know. If it buffers, I'm going to connect again. We'll see. I don't know why it's buffering now. Anyway, please, my God. Great. But follow with me. He goes, I conducted myself in the sight of the world and Christians, and God bears witness if I'm lying. With godliness, sincerity, and holiness, not with trickery or deceit. See what he said? Now, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. If it starts buffering, I'm just going to connect to the router again. I don't know what's going on. Watch here. I hope not. I hope it doesn't. Satan isn't there. We are for, we are, for we are not peddlers of the word of God, as many men, men are. But we speak in all sincerity as sent from God. Yes, in the sight of God and in the company of Christ. We don't peddle the word of God. We don't use the gospel to get rich to build people, to fatten our pocketbooks, to live luxurious lives. We don't do that. We're not perverts that use God's word for financial gain and means. God forbid, we don't do that. But we speak the gospel in all sincerity as men of God, approved by God, and sight of God in Christ. So Paul was not like Muhammad and his God. And may we become like Paul, who strove to be like Jesus in his love for Jesus. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, but we're going to read verses 1 and 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, but we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Now focus, guys. Focus. Don't let Satan distract you. Focus so you can learn. Now you're learning how to live the gospel, how to preach the gospel, how to conduct yourselves in proclaiming the good news of Jesus. Michael, it's not buffering on my end. It's buffering on your end. Refresh. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2. But we have renounced the shameful, we've renounced it, shameful, underhanded things, not walking with cunning like Allah and Muhammad, or adulterating the word of God. We don't use cunning, we don't pervert the word of God, 
We rebuke shameful underhanded tactics. But by making the truth manifest, we recommend ourselves to every human conscience in the sight of God. You catch it? So you understand what Paul did not mean. Okay. But you understand what Paul says. Practical application. Wisdom from the Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit using Paul to tell us how to preach the gospel. And what did the Holy Spirit say in the scripture he inspired Paul to write? The Spirit says, take into consideration your audience and know your audience and conduct yourselves in a manner that will enable them to see the truth of the gospel by removing every unnecessary hindrance and obstacle from them coming to accept Jesus Christ without compromising the truth, without perverting the truth, without hiding the truth. So what is Paul telling you? Practical application, wisdom from the Spirit, how to preach the gospel and how not to preach it. What is Paul telling you? Know the mindset of the person you're preaching to. You do not preach the gospel the same way to a Muslim as you do a Jehovah Witness. Clear? You want to make sure we got that point. 